I would like to invite my first speaker, who is uh, Professor Amir Ghafoor Khan. Professor Amir Ghafoor Khan is actually leading uh, the Vice Chancellor's delegate. Uh, he's a consultant, gastroenterologist, and a very close friend. Um, he's the medical director at Lady Reading Hospital in Peshawar. And he is APS UK Executive Council member covering Peshawar area. And he's been on our panel for the last five, six years. He's advisor to the Royal College. His list of uh, achievements is long. Uh, but I will probably just stop here. Yeah, uh, thank you. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Uh, thank you, uh, Abdul Hafiz, Mr. Chairman. I feel honored and happy to be here. And I'm very pleased that you've taken a picture because I took you all in my bus for dinner. So I'm OK then, uh, last night. Uh, I just really don't want to teach you anything. I just want, you know, we've trained here. Most of us have trained here. We are very familiar with how things are done. Just want to show you the snapshot of what happens at our end. Obviously, culturally, things are different. Uh, we all know what is required, but you know the ground realities are quite different. So this is the place where I work. You can see it is one of the oldest hospitals. We have very senior faculty sitting here. You can see there is a famous fort behind it called Kile by Lysar, which I think, I believe, runs from uh, 12th century. Uh, 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 and this hospital, Lady Reading, is named after uh, Lady uh, Redding, in a sense that her husband, Lord Redding, was the, the, the only Jewish viceroy they had in subcontinent. And from what I hear is that the lady was out uh, riding and she fell and twisted her ankle in that area. At those days, it wasn't that developed. And uh, she, she was treated in what we call a dispensary. Or the equivalent here would be a small GP surgery. And then she decided that they should build a hospital here. And they, she donated. And if you come to Lady Reading, we'll show you here good history. There's a famous Bolton block, which Altaf would know, uh, which is named after Colonel Bolton. So I just want to sort of show you. Uh, this is the older version they've given me. But just a snapshot of uh, how many patients we get. Uh, the a &E, uh, has taken the biggest hit. Uh, we've had very difficult times in the last few years, and I'll show you uh, how. Let me see if I can find. So this is the older version. I'm sorry, there's been some mix-up. I send a newer thing. But anyway, I can talk you through. You could see we went through a very bad phase between 2009 and 2014. To be honest, we were really every sec twice a day we were having, you know, terrorist attack bomb blast. And uh, if you look at uh, 13, 14, that's uh, where especially 13 was, uh, 14 was pretty bad. That's when we had the public school disaster in which uh, we lost a lot of kids. Uh, and at one stage, if you look at it, 48, uh, that's making it twice a month. So. The problem is, you see, when these things happen, you know, there was no planning that Pakistan will go through a phase in which we'll have so many bomb attacks. The rotas are such, I mean, the hospital where I work is uh, 2,000, nearly 2,000 bedded with 38 specialities. So it's a tertiary care hospital. But uh, unfortunately, it also acts as a primary care. Uh, Altaf would know it's called Jarnali Hospital. Uh, I think uh, Daoud Saab will correct me because it is on the Grand Trunk Road, which was called the General Road. So everybody, you know, so even if there is an accident in any part of Peshawar or anywhere, everybody wants to come to Jarnali Hospital. Um, Professor Daoud has worked there, all of us have worked there. So that puts a lot of pressure on us who are specialists. We have, you know, as I said, we have 38 state of the art specialities. I mean, you know, you name it, we have cardiothoracic, we have thoracic, we have invasive cardiology, we have gastroenterology, we have state-of-the-art ophthalmology. But we also deal with primary care. Now, A&E speciality, there would be any specialist sitting here. 
Kazi deals with acute receiving, uh, was not developed. I mean, you know, this acute receiving units have also been a newer concept I have trained here. So in the last few years, this has come up. But we did not realize that this would be something which would be required by us. And then to top it off, you get all these bomb victims. So what do you do? I mean, you know, we can't make a rota for it um, because there is no a &E. So the, the way it is managed was, I'm just showing you that this is just to show how the triage is done. So what uh, happens is that obviously we have all these systems. You know, we have a registration counter, you have a huge trauma hall, you have chest pain clinic. But when, when you have a blast and you don't know, you see, we're just, the paging system is not there. Luckily, we have Mobilink and what do you call it, Telenor and things like that. So the rota system goes out of the window. All of us come in, you know, regardless if you're on call or you're not on call. You just come in. I'll give you an example. When, uh, when the blast happened in APS, our associate professor of surgery uh, was called in and he came and he was operating. Uh, you know, his own child and his own wife was teaching in that uh, school. So somebody went and asked him, you know, do you want to uh, phone your wife and just check? And he said, look, I'm scrubbed up, I'm too busy, I'm sure she'd be all right. I had personally, I had been phoned to go to the combined military hospital in Pishar, which was nearby to the school. And that lady, his wife was lying in the uh, lawns of the hospital. And he didn't know that, and he didn't want to know. He said, I just, let me finish these things, and then I'll find out. I'm sh he was just hoping she would be all right. It turned out that she lost her life, and he didn't know till 8 p.m. when he finished his, you know, whatever uh, uh, surgical procedures he was doing. So you see, that is how, now, these things, I don't know, you can, you folks can advise, that's why we are here, that how do you deal with it? You know, I mean, we can't make rotas for them. I mean, he was not rostered to come in, but there were so many casualties that, you know, the rostered team was in, it was operating. There was a second team which was operating, but we had so many kids, we had so many acute emergencies, and, you know, and in a resource-constrained environment, you can't have 20 cardiothoracic thinking, you know, if a bomb blast happens, we'll have 20 on standby. What will they do the next 360 days of the year? So that is how we manage. Uh, and uh, I don't think so we've managed badly, to be honest. You know, I don't think so we've had any excessive mortalities. I'll show you, we've had difficulties, and I'm sorry, but I think they've put my older version. There is a newer version in which I wanted to show you uh, that it causes us problems, there's no doubt. Uh, and the problems I'll just point out. Let me go through. Obviously, we use this. Those of you who deal with a &E and acute receiving, you know better than me. I am a mere gastroenterologist and hepatologist. But that's the RISOI score. And then, obviously, there is a trauma uh, score there, and they prioritize it according to the protocol. So these are all international protocols that are followed. This is the present status. Um, we've upgraded our a &E and we have a bigger, larger a &E, uh, but uh, the difficulty is that when something happens, there's huge influx. Now, the influx is not this. I, I'll tell you, I hope there's nobody from BBC. Uh, you see, BBC came in, and I won't name the reporter because she's very famous. You see her almost. And she wanted to come into my trauma room and take pictures, and I said, look, would you do that in Royal London? Would you go physically with your cameras and take pictures? And she, uh, uh, and she said no. So I said, why do you think you have any right to do that to my patients? Do you think they're not good enough as your patients? So she wasn't pleased. I said, I don't care. And uh, she complained to my minister. He wasn't pleased because obviously they are politicians. But then I explained to him that, you know, uh, this is what they don't do in their own country. So what gives her a right uh, and see uh, a Pakistani patient in bleeding and showing it on national, international news? 
So since then, BBC has not been pleased, and I've had a few interviews, and since then they've stopped. I think they, they decided not to entertain me, and I'm pleased about that. To be honest, to BBC, they just wanted to show how bad the situation is. They, they, there was no malice intended on their part, but you know because they had. So look, this is my any. You can see the fort at the back. Now, when this is how many patients have come, the bit that is empty is because that's a tunnel. Uh, uh, that's a tunnel, so people can't stand there. <laughs> Otherwise, they fall down. Uh, and that's you see now everybody wants to know, and you can see from their point of view. See, they have no clue what has happened to them. Kit and kin. There is no communication. Everybody wants to come in and see if their kit and kin is in it. Now, how do you control it then? You, you know, you, we've had uh, international Red Cross people come in. We've had um, our own people come in. And we come up with a system, but then there is a Pathan system also, uh, which is that you use a bit of muscle and say, Ruksha, get out. And sometimes that works, and it works, because you know they're, they, they're worried and they're, they're in shock. This is another huge problem we face. When something happens, uh, everybody wants to come and ask about patients. The VIPs, they come. I know they are politicians. They, they, they need to be seen with us. And then it's my job to go around. And then the difficulty is they themselves have a hierarchy. So there are local bosses, which uh, those who are from Peshawar. This is our health minister. He wants to be near this gentleman. I think there's sign somewhere in the previous Shaji, the chief minister of Sindh, the poor chap was pushed back somewhere here. And these are the other ones. So you see, this causes another problem. I've asked them so many times. And they say, look, if we go, we are damned. If we don't go, we are damned. Because, you know, I remember Imran, because that's his patch. He didn't come for three days. Because he phoned me and I said, don't come. If you come, the whole bloody place will be torn apart. And uh, when he came after three days, he was criticized heavily that, you know, he's not bothered and this is, this is just a national thing. You know, you, you need to be seen. I mean, we all work here. There's a visiting time. You come at a visiting time. Even your own mother, you bring them a bunch of flowers and a chocolate and just go back. But you can't bring chocolate in Peshawar. They'll beat you up <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> okay. So uh, obviously, we've made progress. Uh, we have established, in fact, we've had a boy from here who's joined us, uh, pure a &E consultants. We'll be more than happy if you people want to volunteer and help, and uh, apps have arranged for uh, people to come. Uh, we have academic uh, discourse. Uh, the College of Physicians of Pakistan is in the middle of accrediting it and developing the speciality, and hopefully we'll take some suggestions from you in person, or you know, you can contact me through apps if you want. And we hope that they have died down. I can, I'm very pleased to report that in 2017, we've only had three incidences, and they are also minor. So God has been kind, and we hope that the trend would continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for a very interesting talk. Uh, a lot of people said only Gore finish in time. So here we go. Finished. I'm more than So, obviously, that's a bit more brilliant insight into how you deal with a very complex situation. We have maybe time for one question. If somebody wants to. Yes, sir. Mr. Rizmi, and I'm a consultant in emergency medicine Good. Uh, for a, a long time. So, where are you going to come from? Or, uh, in your presentation, mein, the question that you have asked is, ke kis tarah se so we, hai yahan pe? we have specific courses, which is, uh, uh, one of them is called the H-MIMS. Yeah. This is for dealing with the major uh, trauma and major incidences, as we call that. Okay. This is a two to three day course, and it's a very hands-on. So you get the practical experience, the way the whole hospital is mobilized to deal with the situation like the bomb blast that you have mentioned. Okay. So, 
So, what are you suggesting? We uh, send folks here? It can work either way. You can either send them, we will welcome them. I can facilitate that. And if you want the other way, we can send a faculty from here to teach you over there. We will be delighted. Malke Bartania Kaap Khyal Rakhege. Pound sterling ke paise. Alhamdulillah. I am in a position. Okay. Uh, no, joke aside, sir, we'll be delighted. Of, that's why you see we are having this discourse that we would want this liaison to develop so that either way, uh, joke aside. hospitality is mashur. Bilkul. Dil itna chota na kijiye. Sir, chappal kabab hum aapko do kilo khilayenge ek kijiye. Aap mein sirf accommodation de dijiye. Sir, accommodation hi hum aapko. Yahan se bhej dunga. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.